how to add a document table to Business Central using the simple object designer. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the document template, how to create a document table inside Business Central using the simple object designer. And let's make sure that we all know what a document table is. So here's the sales order. and um, this is a document, we have a header, we actually have lines. And now you might say, but hang on, Eric, a sales order is not a table, it's at least two tables. And you're right. But from the simple object designer's perspective, we figured that out for you. you. You just need to worry about what fields goes where, and then we take care of all the technicalities. And um, the way we do that is because we have a template. Um, that knows about documents. So I will go to a new feature. And we in this in the object design, we call this a, a feature because it's a bundle of some data, some UI, some business logic, and all that good stuff. Um, and all that together, we call that a feature. But now we will we'll create use the now we will use the document template to create this feature. So we got to ask answer a couple of questions. What do we want to name this? Well, let's create a visit log. So we'll call the new table for visit. And we can give the um, give it a nice caption, visit log. So the, the, the name is just a technical name that no users will see. They will see the caption. Um, we have the option to have a posted variant. So like we have a sales order and a post a sales invoice. Uh, we can emulate that concept, um, but maybe we'll, we'll not call it post. Let's call it that we finish a visit log and then a visit log that has been finished is called a finished visit log. So I go next and I go next and I'm now at the feature card and I'm ready to add fields. So what's important here is that we have to think about where a field should go. Um, and there is one constraint when you're working with uh, the document template is that we need to have a primary key field that is sitting on both the lines and the header. So we will call that the visit number and do a code 20, show it on a list, show it on a card. And maybe we actually want the system to, you know, to generate the numbers for us. So when you create a new visit log, we get a new number, just like we get a new sales order number. So we can turn on number series for this. This will require a setup table to store what number series to use. So should I create this? Yes please. And now we can continue and add fields. And now I'm going to add some, some fields to the header. Uh, maybe we want a visit date, which should be a date. Just call the caption date. We want it on the list, we want it on the card. Um, how about a customer number? So we'll add a customer number. We say select the lookup to actually look up the customer. Um, and I can go into field setting and say, in that case, I'm looking, gonna use the customer table as the lookup table. Um, let's add another one here. Let's also get the, you know, the customer name here. That's a text. So we want the name on the list on the card. We only want the customer number on the card. But when I do look up a customer. I want the name to be put into this field. So I go back to the customer number field and I will hit look up field transfers and say that when I am selecting a customer, I want the name field from the value from the name field from the customer to be transferred into the name field we just created here. Um, so now we have from name to name. So whenever we select a customer, we will also get the customer's name transferred. Let's let's add some fields to to the line. Um, and since this is a is a is a visit log, let's uh, just you know add a description thing. We want that on on the card, not on the list. 
And so, so one thing, let me sh let me show you one thing that this template also knows about. So if I create, actually create three more fields. So I create a field called unit price, which is a decimal. We want it on the card. I create a uh, field called quantity, also decimal. We want this on the card. I create a field called total decimal. We want this on the card. So you can see that there's a relationship between these fields. If if we were to think about that, unit price times quantity would equal the total. So the template knows about this sort of mechanism. So we could go into field settings here under the unit price field and say, hey, this field has is controlling a feature function called unit price. So now we have designated this field to own the feature function called unit price. I'm going to do the same thing with quantity, uh, saying that this owns the line quantity field function. And the last one, I'm going to tell that this controls the total line, line total field function. So now we have told the template that these three fields that we we decided what to call and, and stuff like that, we have designated them to have special features. So when the system will generate this, the code for this, it will wire these fields up to support a unit price times quantity times total. So and there, there's a more advanced example where I'm trying combining all the templates into a, a bigger solution where we take, you know, we get the unit price from an item we select and so on. Uh, but in this, I'm just going to show the simple relationship between these three. And actually, I think we might be done. Let's just have a look at the fields and see what we have. It looks fine. Uh, I can do a verify feature. There's no issues found. So. With that, and you saw because I selected that I wanted a number series for my, my uh, locks, we got a setup feature created that has a visit number series field. Um, and we're ready to deploy. So we'll publish. And what happens now? So publish to this environment, yes. So what happens now is that the app is now writing all the code. So all the code that is that is needed for this template is being written. Then the app is building an app file. Um, and when it's done building the app file, two things happen. The first is that we get the app file downloaded. So if you're doing this in a sandbox, you can take the downloaded app file and upload manually to a production environment and employ that. So you can do your testing, your development in the sandbox with the object designer, and then you deploy the result in your production. Or you can run this in production. And this is the second part that's happening is that what we just created is also getting deployed because we answered yes to that. It's getting deployed to this environment. So right now, and there's a lot of noise in this one. Ignore that. The only interesting part here is the top line. And the upload is in progress. If I hit a 5, we can see that it's still in progress. So right now, we have sent the app file to Microsoft and asked them to deploy the app file to this environment. And Microsoft are currently doing that for us. And sometimes it's super fast. And other times, it takes you know a few seconds. And, and there we are. It's done. So. Let's go and uh, check out our new customization. I will close all this and I'll hit a five, I'll control a five just to reload my business central to make sure that uh, we are not getting the, somebody has changed something, please restart. And um, if I go here, we can see that now I had visit a log and actually because I did a demo uh, test run of this just before I started recording it, you can see that I already bookmarked these two uh, from an earlier version, and Business Central is clever enough to remember that. So we have a visit log list and a finished visit log list. But actually, let's just document table setup. Remember, we actually created a setup thing also. So I can go in here and say I want a new setup, and I can select the number series I want for my documents, and let's use. Uh, I'm just using a random, the opportunity number series. 
So I can go back now to my visit log. We see there's nothing here, so I can click new. We get into the visit log card that we have specified, and we can see there is a visit number. So if I exit that, I, I get a number, I get a date I can put in, and I can select a customer here. And when I select a customer, I get the, f the name from the customer transfer to the name field. I have my description lines that I can type about how this visit works. And we can say that if, let's see if we can do uh, two times two here. So unit price is two, quantity is two, total is four. How about that? Uh, so our document is working. We have a finish action up here in the action bar. Uh, so I can hit that. Finish visit log, yes, please. This is closed. If we go back and open the finish visit log, now we have the one we just created here in a read-only state. So that is how you create a, uh, a document table uh, in using the simple object designer in yeah, 10 minutes. And uh, do check out some of the other examples. Check out the app. Uh, there is one example where I'm combining all the templates into a bigger solution. Uh, check it out. And um, all info is on the, in the links below. See you later.